Hi there, I'm Cliff Mims and welcome to Talking Ed. Uh, today I'm at the AIM conference, that's A-A-I-M, it's a Arkansas's uh, Association of Advanced Instructional Media. It's their Library and Media Specialist Conference. And they have a number of artists here, excuse me, authors here. And today joining me to talk, uh, for Talking Ed is Mr. Jefferson Knapp, who's one of these children's authors. Uh, Jefferson has a uh, trilogy and he's going to tell us a little bit about that. So Jefferson, you've got three books and you have three more on the way at some point. But tell us, where are you so far in your storyline? Um, well, I am at the annoying part where people get to read about the prequel in the fourth book. Okay. I have a, a, a trilogy and then on the fourth book I'm taking people back 60 years before the first book and explaining some of the secrets that you will read about in the trilogy of the kingdom at the end of the driveway. Okay. And so tell us a little bit about this kingdom at the end of the driveway. The kingdom at the end of the driveway, um, I kind of got the inspiration from a, an old dog. It was a pug that I once had. His name was Pugsley. And um, a lot of people, uh, most people are dog lovers. Some people are cat lovers, but I'm a dog lover. And um, I kind of wrote a story based on my old dog Pugsley. And um, he had such a personality. I thought it would be kind of neat if I um, made him a king. Maybe I, maybe he would, like lived a secret life that I never knew about. And so I decided in my book, this boy that was the, that's the main character, Benjamin Biggs, would have a dog named Pugsley. And he finds out that after his dog dies, that Pugsley was living this secret life as a king of this hidden kingdom of animals the entire time he was alive. Um, and actually, the, this dog is assassinated by a giant snake named Ferengus, and now they need the dog's owner to be their king. Um, he can actually... No worries, keep going. Okay. He can actually um, understand animals talking, and he can get inside this kingdom while he is wearing his dog's collar. And that's what the whole story is about, is this dog's collar. Um, and he goes on many adventures because of his dog's collar. It's magical. Very good. So, very good. And I think one of the characters is here today, is that correct? Yes. Um, he came all the way from China to, to Arkansas today. <laughs> this is Ferengus. He's an animatronic python. Um, he is a 25-foot python in the book of the Brave Journey. And um, I won't give a, away what happens to him at the end, but he has a mother that's very angry in books two and three. And she's twice as big. And Ferengus has been kind of a crowd hit here in the exhibit hall, yeah. as you can imagine, <laughs> this lifelike looking 20 foot, foot uh, python sitting here in the exhibit hall has caught a lot of people's attention. Um, all right, so back to your trilogy, uh, so what's kind of the target reading audience? Um, third through sixth, and um, kindergarten through second, a lot of their parents will read these stories to them. Um, I even had, I mean, of course your grandma is going to be biased, but my 90 year old <laughs> grandma read it and she loved it. Um, but one thing that was, that, that really convinced me, this is for all ages. I used to work with a guy, looked like he came right from the mountains. He had a big beard and, uh, you know, he, 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 he only read Field and Stream. That, that's, that's all he read. I let him read my book and now he's hooked. He can't wait for the next book to come out. So all ages, pet owners, pet lovers, anybody who was once a kid, um, Hopefully you'll love these books. Very good. And we have a lot of teachers that watch this vidcast. And so um, do you have any advice for young people that might be falling in love with writing or might have an interest in becoming authors someday? Do you have any advice? All I can say is if you feel like you have a story in your head, you've got to get it out. You've got to get it out on paper. And I had never, I didn't have any experience in writing stories, but when I got this idea, the first thing I did was I wrote out a storyline. I had a plot outline. I wrote down every big scene that would happen in my book, and I put it in order. And I just wrote, wrote it from beginning point A to point B to point C, and that's how I have to write my stories, is off of a storyboard. So very good, very good. And if I've overheard some conversations correctly, you'd be okay with teachers and librarians connecting, uh, contacting you and possibly visiting schools? No, what? definitely. Um, this is my main job, and um, my, uh, my love is just going to schools, uh, elementaries, intermediates, and, and middle schools, and getting kids excited about reading. Right. Um, 
So yeah. And how can people connect with you? Do you have a website? I do. Um, you can go to jeffersonnapp, K-N-A-P-P dot com. That is my website for the series. Um, I'm on Facebook. You can search The Kingdom at the End of the Driveway. It's a long search, but The Kingdom at the End of the Driveway on Facebook. And I'm also on Twitter. You can find Jefferson Knapp on Twitter as well. Okay, that's Jefferson Knapp, uh, J-E-F-F-E-R-S-O-N. Yes. Knapp is K-N-A-P-P, correct? That's right. Very good. And I'll give you, just so you have an idea of what you'll be looking for, I'm going to let you see the book covers. He has them in large format here. So just to reassure you, when you find, find him on Facebook or when you Google him or look on Amazon, you'll know that you're in the right area. And you can learn more about the adventures of the animals and the kingdom at the end of the driveway and find out about this snake. And there's even a bigger snake I found out in book three, right? Yeah, there's a 50-foot python. Yeah, I'm not so sure I'm okay <laughs> with this snake thing, but all right. Well, thank you for joining us on Talking Ed. Uh, I'm Cliff Mims, and we'll see you next time.